there's more to it. But uh, if you sell locally, sites in a local area are good for you as well. Um, don't use link exchanges. Uh, I hear mixed feelings on these, but just don't do them. Don't say, hey, um, if, if, if you give me a backlink, I'll give a backlink to you. It cancels each other out. It doesn't do any good. Google sees right through that. Uh, just, if somebody sends you an email, hey, do you want to do a link exchange? Don't do it. Uh, just, just don't. <laughs> there are exceptions, of course, uh, if it's like, the, say, the Chamber of Commerce or some uh, strong organization, uh, but those are the exceptions. Articles. Okay. 
if you write an article, I, I don't write as much as I used to, but I used to write a lot of content for one of my websites, and that's all that, that's that's all I did was write content for easy articles. Well, Google has improved their algorithm, and now they're you know looking more at the diversity of your links. So the more diversity you can have in your backlinks, the better. It's going to look more natural. You know, having natural backlinks is is very important to the search engines and your website. So the more natural it looks, the better. And you can create more of a natural feel or a natural backlinking uh, strategy utilizing not all of these. You don't have to utilize all of them, but maybe like three or so, three or four different areas, okay? How many links do you need? Well, this is dependent on uh, your reach and your competition. Uh, that's a whole nother course on competition. But um, if you're a local, you need less than a regional. And if you're national or worldwide, you're gonna need a lot more backlinks. So it just depends on the level of competition. There's different tools out there that you can use. There's the Google Keyword Tool. I always recommend there's other softwares out there uh, that you can purchase that will dig deeper into your uh, competition. Um, again, that is a, another uh, presentation on competition. And it can get pretty involved, but just understand the basics that <coughs> competition is really how many, how many websites are, let's say for example, Santa Barbara. I know there are a lot of realtors in Santa Barbara. For as tight or as uh, small of a market we are, there's a lot of realtors out there. There's a lot of people competing for business, more so today than when the big boom was going on because it was just coming like, I mean, you guys know. So now it's very competitive. People are fighting for those top 10 positions. I mean, think about it. If there's a thousand agents trying to get on page one for a keyword, there's only 10 spots. So what do they have to do? They have to create backlinks. They have to have some diversity out there, like creating maybe a video. Uh, do you guys know who owns YouTube? Google. Yeah, Google. <coughs> so that's the number two search engine out there. So creating video is going to really help. Um, just being different. Out competing your competition. That's really what it comes down to. I know it sounds simple. It really is. Uh, you just have to understand your competition, the keywords that you're targeting, and then out compete them. Just out backlink them, create more content. So. Again, uh, outwork the competition. Google Places. Uh, some of you guys mentioned you have local businesses here. Um, I work out of my house, so I'm not gonna really qualify for Google Places because I need a physical location. Um, but Google Places are, and you see it, if you search for, I, I don't even know what I, I typed here, Santa Barbara something, I can't read it. But uh, when you type in a local business, it's gonna pop up these uh, Google places. You're gonna, you're gonna see these stars, you're gonna see the map over here. Uh, this is important to be on. Uh, if, you guys, if you guys don't have your Google places claimed, uh, you should. Um, I, I can show you guys how to do that, it's free. That's how I found this place tonight. <laughs> hey, right. There you go, yep. there you go. Um, <clears throat> So what is, uh, what is local search? I mean, this is all about local search. Um, even as a real estate investor, we all have markets that we target, right? Uh, my market when I was doing uh, investing was Oklahoma City. So I was targeting Oklahoma City, not on a national basis. I was very narrowed down into a city. Now it was competitive, because it's a big city. But if you're in a smaller market, your competition is going to be less, but you're going to want to uh, focus on local search. So local search is any search made with the goal of finding something in a specific geographic area. 
So Santa Barbara, plumbers, painters, what, whatever it may be. This is also known as uh, local intent. If somebody's typing in uh, Santa Barbara CPAs, that's local intent. They're looking for someone in Santa Barbara, and if you're not up here, they're going to go to the, the top people, right? So it's important that uh, you focus on Google Places if you have a local business. <coughs> uh, searcher uh, uses geographic modifiers, like your IP address. Uh, this is my IP address, and that's just numbers, but uh, the search engines will read that IP address, and it's, it'll tell the search engines where you're, where you're currently at. Not exactly where I'm at, but they know I'm in Santa Barbara. They know approximately where I'm at. Search engine interprets local intent search. So here's an example. Right over here, I have Santa Barbara as where I'm located. This is a modifier, I guess you could say. And uh, so I'm basically letting Google know that I'm in Santa Barbara. And all I do is I typed in plumbers. I even put Santa Barbara. But because Google knows that my IP address is in Santa Barbara, I'm in Santa Barbara over here, it's pulling up Santa Barbara listings. There's your Google Places, and even the Google Ads. Okay, these are AdWords, and, uh, and also the map over there. So, so why is uh, local SEO important? Here's some stats, 73% of activity online is in one way or another related to local content. For every one dollar US consumer spent online, another five or six are going to offline purchases that are influenced by online <coughs> research. And 97% of internet users in the US gather shopping information online, and of those consumers, 51% of them explicitly characterize their behavior as shop online, purchase offline. So I think that's important to note. If you have a product or service that uh, you're trying to promote, uh, more so products, is that they're going online, they're doing their re research online, now they, they have that instant gratification, they want it right now. I mean, you know, the iPad 3 just came out, and everybody wants them. They sold three million units. It's, they broke records off of that. And guess what? Those people had instant gratification. They went to the store and they're waiting in lines uh, the night before for that, you know. But they they are doing the research online. They read all the hype online. Now they're purchasing offline. Seventy percent of online searches will use Little Search to find offline businesses. Offline businesses are like your brick and mortar type businesses. So how high do I need to rank? Well, uh, Chinica, uh, which did a survey of their service, and they found that the number one uh, ranking got 30, what is that, 31% or 34.35%, and then it goes on down. As you can see, that number dwindles. Uh, the number 10 spot only got 2.71%. So this gives you a good idea as far as your top three positions. You really got to be in those top three positions. You're losing a lot of business in those other positions, and especially page two. If you're on page two, you're getting next to no traffic. So expectations for SEO. Don't expect results overnight. Um, you know, you, you may, you may be pitched by somebody or an, uh, a marketer like myself that says, I could get you to the page one of Google in a week. Well, I can do the same thing, but it's not gonna stay there because Google's gonna see right through it. Some people use uh, what they call black hat tactics. There's white hat, gray hat, black hat. White hat is the good stuff. That's all I do. That's because that's what Google wants. And when Google makes algorithm changes, and algorithm changes can affect your website and your rankings, just so you know. And I, I will talk briefly on that. 
it's not okay to work it at it month of, um, one month and not the next. This is a continual process. Um, you know, I've, I always tell people, you know, uh, when I sit down with a client, I always ask them, what is your budget that you can realistically spend for your marketing? If you can't afford it, then we need to adjust it to where you feel comfortable because this needs to be an ongoing process. It's not, let's do it for a couple months, see how it works, and eh, you know, maybe it's not going as good as it should. Well, that's because it takes time, it doesn't happen overnight, and then they stop. And then they wonder why they didn't get their rankings. So it's important that you keep that in mind that it is an ongoing process. Same with marketing. Uh, if you're looking for properties, it's a numbers game, right? It's the same thing with, with marketing is that it's a numbers game um, and SEO. So check out your competition, check your keywords, meta, data, backlinks, social media presence, this is for your competition. Um, for competition, Google Places, you also want to check out those listings as well. How much time do I have? What time is it? 45 more minutes. 8.15, so you're just about where you should be. So if you're getting close to wrapping it up, then we can get uh, Jackie on. What do I have, like five minutes? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip through some of this stuff. Okay. And like I said, you guys, I'll, I'll send you guys the slides if you want, and you can go through it. I know it's a lot of content, but I wanted to give you guys a lot of good stuff. Uh, no home is ever complete without <coughs> adding the rooms and furnishings, right? So I use that analogy, and those uh, the rooms and furnishings are your social media, mobile marketing, uh, all that kind of stuff. So email marketing, video marketing, uh, social media, your brand. Why bother with social media? It's the new word of mouth. Uh, just like the guys mentioned, it's the no like trust. Uh, you know somebody, you start to like them, and then you trust them because they give you a lot of good stuff. <clears throat> Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm going to skip through some of this stuff. Uh, Facebook, we already talked to those other, the guys before talked about it. Uh, but just to give you an idea of the magnitude of 800 million, Twitter, and actually those guys had different numbers, so they're, they're probably more accurate. They, I think they had 200 million on <coughs> Twitter. Um, Brandon? Yeah. On Facebook, moving over to this timeline, what is your feeling about how that is compared to what it was in the past? I mean, it's, what's it, your... It, it takes a little getting used to. Mm -hmm. um, I like it mm -hmm. because it, it allows people to see a whole history of your company. I mean, just think of timeline. If you go to Coca-Cola, their timeline goes all the way back to 18-something. If you go all the way down to their very beginning, you're going to see original pictures and stuff. So it's a great way to directly connect to the time of point of that business. The other thing is, um, there's a, it, it would if you guys want to talk more about it after the presentation, um, I do have a handout for you guys on Facebook timeline. I've printed some stuff out for you guys. It's my latest blog post. It goes over those changes. So. And if you have two or three businesses, yeah. are you saying that you really need to have a Facebook specifically for each one of those businesses and then maybe a Facebook personally for whatever? And how would you differentiate that? And, I your, mean, your, your personal is just your personal. Just, just the personal. And yeah. Keep the business business. Keep your business business. I mean, my, my okay. business is tied to my personal profile. Okay. Um, just because I invite my friends over to my business. 